Hey everyone, and welcome to the Python data analytics series for absolute beginners. In this series, we're going to cover all the basic fundamentals behind data analytics using the Python programming language. It'll be broken up into a couple of episodes where in each episode, we'll explore one or more relevant topics to data analytics. By the end of the series, you'll have a solid understanding of what data analytics is, how to read and clean data sets, how to analyze these data sets programmatically, how to build simple predictive models, and how to continue with your data analytics journey moving forward. For this first episode, I want to establish what data analytics actually is, what it's used for, and why you should learn it, as well as getting our project environment set up. This episode will be pretty short, as we're not doing too much coding, however the next video and the ones after will be quite a bit longer, as we'll actually be diving into a lot of coding. To start off, let's just do a quick overview of what data analytics actually is, and why you might be interested in learning it. If you already know this, or you don't care maybe, you can go ahead and skip forward to the quick project setup. Put simply, data analytics is essentially the combination of statistics with computer science concepts, basically meant to produce meaningful insights or knowledge from data sets. The point of data analytics is to look at sets of data, analyze this data to find patterns or trends, and then use this analysis to make predictions for the future. An example application of data analytics could be the following scenario. Let's say you work for a company that sells gym gear through an online store. Your boss gives you a large set of data regarding the demographics of the people who buy your products, including their age, race, gender, education status, etc. Your goal is to use the data set to figure out the demographic variable that makes someone the most likely to buy your product, and then build predictive models regarding future demographic segments that may help your company market their product better. Why is data analysis such a great field to get into? Well, every company wants to maximize their profits, so a huge majority of companies need data analysts to analyze data in order to make more educated decisions in the future, thus strengthening the company. In fact, data analysts can earn companies millions of dollars, hence why companies are willing to pay a good premium to hire data analysts. In fact, Indeed says the average data analyst salary in the U.S. is around $123,842 per year, and Salary.com says it at approximately $141,000 per year. You won't get to that salary overnight, but this of course will put you on the right path towards getting there. Without taking up any more time, let's actually get into the setup of the data analytics environment we're going to be using for this series. For this course, we'll be using the Python programming language. There are some other languages you could use, like R. However, Python is our language of choice for this series, as I believe it to be the best language overall for data analytics. You don't need to have an incredibly deep understanding of Python in order to do well in this course. However, I do recommend you check out my Python coding tutorials if you've never touched Python before at all. This course is not a tutorial for Python, rather it is a data analytics course merely using Python as a tool. To set up our environment, head to Google Collaboratory. Collaboratory is actually the exact program I'm in right now, and that's what I use to actually make these tech boxes here. You can access it via collab.research.google.com, or you can just go into the Google Suite menu and scroll down until you see Collaboratory because it is a Google tool. Log in with an email if you haven't already, and then create a new file. You should have a screen with just one empty code block, and this editor is where we'll be writing all of our code. Collaboratory puts codes in blocks, and you run each block individually. For example, let's just go ahead and go up here. We'll make a new code block in this top left little block here. It says plus code. Make a new code block, and let's just type, what does it say, print, hello, YouTube. And then I can run it by pressing this play button, and then it'll run whatever code is in this chunk, and so it does, and it prints off hello, YouTube. Now, if I create, let's say, a new code block, and then in this one, I'm just gonna print something like, hello world, and then I run this block, it'll only print out hello world and not hello YouTube, because it only runs one block at a time, and you do run each block by just hitting the play button on each block, so it's pretty simple. Throughout the series, we'll be using comments to help write in English what our code is doing. So to do this, in the code block, we can basically just type this little pound symbol, and then that basically marks it as a comment, so it won't be interpreted as actual code. So then, in this line that has the pound symbol and you can kind of just write whatever you want. So I'll just say like this line prints out the words, hello YouTube. So you might see something like this quite often if you're looking at docs, basically just a way to kind of document code and what each thing is doing. If you want to dedicate a large amount of text to be a comment, you can instead create a text block instead of a code block just with comments inside of it. So to do that, just go up here and we see like the new code block, just look to the right of it and there should be an add text cell and you can just add it like this and there's a little uh, text editor that just pops up here. These blocks are just meant to be generic text box that can be used to explain processes or whatever else you need. And there's no option to run it because there won't actually be any code inside of it. All the stuff up here that I wrote, all up here about data analytics was done with the text block rather than with a code block. And within any of these blocks, you can actually go um, click on them and there should be a little gear on the right hand side that pops up. And you can open a settings menu. You can kind of customize the blocks however you want and just to kind of get it to your liking. In the next video, we're going to start to actually explore some beginner data analytics concept using Python and we'll actually begin the coding journey. So I'll see you there.